Black Op Radio presents 50 Reasons for 50 Years Why the Warren Commission may be the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public Of course, if a fellow is accurate enough to hit Kennedy right in the neck on one shot and knock his head off the next one Well, he didn't miss completely with that third shot According to that theory, he not only missed the whole automobile, but he missed the street well, the man's good enough shot to put two bullets right in candy. He didn't miss that old automobile and all the street. I'm Leno Sanek, the host of Black Op Radio. Along with President Kennedy and Governor Connolly, a third person was wounded in Dealey Plaza on November 22nd, 1963. The presidential motorcade rounded the corner of Main Street to turn over onto Elm. Right after the presidential car had turned the corner, I heard these three loud noises. Show me where you were standing when you heard the shots. I was standing at the east end of the triple underpass. Did you indicate where the bullet struck the concrete curb? The bullet struck the curb on the south curb of Main Street. It was a deputy sheriff, Buddy Walters. Says, you know, I felt something sting me on the face. But he says, yes, says, you got blood on your cheek. Uh, he says, where were you standing? I says, well, down by the underpass. And Walters got about 10 feet away. He says, look there on the curb, there was a very visible mark on the curb where a bullet had struck. Either a fragment of the bullet or a piece of the concrete it flew up and scratched my face. The FBI, who officially took over the investigation a few days after the assassination, was not interested in this event. Tag was not interviewed until the 14th of December, a week after the FBI's primary investigative report had been filed. In that report, the FBI established a shooting sequence of two shots striking President Kennedy and one shot striking Governor Connolly. They did not account for an apparent missed or wild shot. The Warren Commission also ignored James Tague for months. In June 1964, he contacted a Dallas Times Herald reporter and the resulting story was picked up nationally. Due to this publicity, the Warren Commission finally listed Tague as a witness requiring an interview. James Tagg was deposed in late July 1964. In August, the FBI submitted the curbstone to a lab analysis after acknowledging the curb had been patched, presumably by the city of Dallas, the FBI would describe a bullet smear showing remnants of lead with a trace of antimony, but no trace of copper, as would be expected from the copper jacketed bullets allegedly used by Lee Oswald. The take shot created a host of problems for the Warren Commission's version of events. Since they were committed to a scenario that allowed for only three shots, one missed or wild shot meant the single bullet theory had to be fully embraced, which has been a source of doubt in the Warren Commission's finding ever since. In the end, the Warren Commission could offer no account for the take shot other than to acknowledge it happened. Any explanation only served to undermine their predetermined scenario. Accordingly, we are left with a sharpshooting assassin who scored two direct hits on a moving target, but also firing a shot which not only missed the vehicle, it missed the street completely. It is just unbelievable. Stay tuned for the next installment as we expose week after week 50 lies the Warren Commission would like you to believe.